<laughs> Good morning, streamers. Do you want to learn how to use Ecamm Live? The best Mac live streaming software out there. Um, of course, today is just an open q and I've got my demo button ready to go. Look at this. Yep. Demo time. So if you have questions, um, if you're struggling with anything inside of Ecamm, if you want to, if you've seen something and you want to match that and you don't know how, uh, then uh, bring it on. Today is open Q&A demo time. So if you have a question, be sure to put a Q in front of your question. That will ensure that it gets over into my queue to be able to answer all of the questions and not miss anything because chat goes by pretty quickly around here. So uh, put a Q in front of your question and I will get them in the order that they were received. <laughs> Just like a proper phone call, uh, phone uh, to call service, whatever. <laughs> Live demo mode. Okay, uh, big question. Waiting, waiting. <laughs> if you're new around here, do type new in the comments. I would love, love, love to meet you. If you are new, then you don't know me. Hi, I'm Laria Petrucci from Live Streaming Pros, where I help you create professional live video that is, oh, ah, I forgot to fix that one. That is uniquely you. And hey, I've had two little things go wrong today. Uh, I will show you how to fix those. <laughs> and uh, we'll, we'll kick off with that. How about that? Um, but also, uh, this is the show that I do in partnership with Ecamm Live, my favorite Mac streaming software out there. It is what I use day in and day out. And I freaking adore how intuitive it is, how easy it is to get high quality professional live video, video, webinars, Zoom calls, all of the things um, in order to uh, make you stand out and stand out above the crowd. Johnny is new. Enjoy your show. Oh, welcome. Thank you so much, Johnny. Uh, do you stream already? Are you wanting to become a streamer? Tell me. Tell me about yourself. All right. Hey, hey, Lisa, nice to see you. Okay. Um, let's see. We've got some questions already coming through. So I will actually point out one thing. So I'm going to go into demo mode real quick because um, if you were watching the countdown timer, um, then... Okay, so this is the countdown timer that I have. And if you were watching during the countdown today, you would have noticed that it didn't actually go after it hit zero, it didn't trigger to, to go to me. Um, and so what we wanna do is make sure that that countdown timer actually does not just sit at zero. So if you are using countdown timers, then I want you to hit this edit button on the timer itself. And it's supposed to go to the next scene when finished. Okay. That might've just been a, a bug or something. Oh, nope. Well, okay. So I'll have to, I'll have to look at that, but, um, that might just be on my end, but make sure that you have go to next scene when finished, clicked, and then it'll go to the next scene, which is the main cam, right? So make sure that you have that in order in your scenes window. Otherwise that won't happen the way you want it to. Okay. Uh, coming out of demo mode. I'm going to hop back and forth between demo mode and not today to answer all of your questions. Judd uh, asked, can I recommend an iMac 27 inch monitor mount for the Sony a6100? So it sounds to me like what you're trying to do is actually mount the camera to the monitor. I would not suggest that. So what I do um, is I was looking at my behind the scenes camera. It's an Abby cam at the moment, but maybe I could uh, throw that up there. But um, essentially I mount this to the desk, right? So my, here, do you guys want, do you guys want that? Does that sound good? I'm gonna uh, just hang tight for me. I'm gonna actually move this camera over here and scream at you. <laughs> I get this set up so that you can see what it is I am actually doing. And hang tight, no one go anywhere. No one go anywhere. <laughs> All right, I've got a behind the scenes camera for you now. <laughs> Let's go. 
do that behind the scenes cam. Okay, so you can see here, I actually have my camera mounted to an L, uh, to a DIY mounting system. Um, and we can link to that as well. But um, I actually, uh, you also have the ability to um, get the Elgato mount, uh, the multi-mount, the Elgato multi-mount is a great option. Now, if you don't want to invest in that, um, then this DIY option is an option, but you have to kind of do some work for it. It is DIY. So, um, yeah. What did you learn, Mr. Poseidon? I'm glad you learned. <laughs> so, okay. So I just finished the cable management video and then <laughs> I had to unpack it all. I had to undo all my cable management, uh, because, uh, something got un hooked. And anyway, anyway, that's a whole other story. Cable management video actually coming out. All my tips on cable management comes out Monday, um, on the live streaming pros channels. And that is a video that is finishing out the entire series of my studio setup, um, made possible by Ecamm. So you see how I have everything set up. Uh, and I, I love cable well, I hate cable management as do we all, but the, I, I do a pretty good job with cable management. Um, and not that you could see that from that experience because I was, I had a whole bunch of other things going on that I was putting into my studio, but, um, I have lots of tips for you. It, in fact, it's, it's so packed full of tips that we're trying to figure out whether anybody wants to watch a 20 minute video on cable management. Let me know. Do you want to watch a 20 minute video full of, or should we cut things out? <laughs> Do you want all the tips or a shorter video? Let me know because we're trying to, we're trying to like nail that down right now, <laughs> but that's coming out Monday. <laughs> all right. Um, $5 super chat. I have the LSP countdown timer. And if my guest dances some like Luria, what is the best way to switch from me to the guest in the countdown? Great question. Okay. So what we're going to do is go into, okay, you, hold on. Before I answer that, why is it only 20 minutes? Patrick wants to know, <laughs> get the DVD for the uncut version. There you go. <laughs> um, cable management sounds like my dream video. Another thing I obsess all the tips. Okay. So you guys want a 20 minute cable management video. All right, then we won't cut anything out. <laughs> I was like, well, I don't know what to cut out. Anyway, let me answer, um, let me answer Sammy. Uh, so with the countdown timer, so this is built out, you know, with the, the different layers, right. For the, for the countdown timer. Um, then what I do is actually, I open up stream deck and, um, in my countdown timer, that's a, that's a whole, that's a scene, right? This is run scene. But then I have Luria and then I have like guest, right? And so like for the Abby cam that I did in today's, that was set for this. So this is actually a camera switcher, right? So if you go into here, um, camera switcher, this is the one right here that's what you would want to drag. And so when I'm playing my countdown timer, I just switch cameras based on this one and this one, or if I have four guests or whatever. So I just hop back and forth between these buttons and that keeps the scene live that you're seeing now, but it allows me to change the camera without changing the scene. So that's how we do that. Oh, wait, hold on. Okay. There we go. Hopefully that helps. All right. I still have snow. I do still have snow, even though it's spring. <laughs> um, let's see. Wow. Okay. You guys are, um, wow. Okay. <laughs> I love, I love the feedback because that makes my job easier today. I don't have to, I don't have to figure out what to cut. So that was going to be a big thing today. 
How much is the DVD? Oh, funny. Okay, next question. Oh, wait, hold on. Hey, Scott. Uh, uh, would love to see a vid on mobile studio setup. Can't use Ecamm. Uh, yeah, so you guys, you guys have some. So this nomadic idea, Scott and Ariane, Ariane is my sister. Uh, they are in an uh, Airstream that they rebuild from scratch and they have some, quite a few problems. <laughs> I mean, I'm not talking them as people, um, but they like in terms of streaming, in terms of uh, being out on the road in an Airstream, uh, they have uh, quite the setup. So yeah, mobile studio setup. We can work on that. <laughs> we can do a mobile week, right? <laughs> Something like that. Okay, so next question. Um, and by the way, if you guys uh, do like content about backpacking, I'm just gonna give my sister a plug. Sorry guys. <laughs> Um, this nomadic idea, uh, if you guys like, you know, uh, backpacking content, nomadic kind of content, uh, on the road, in, on the go, outdoorsy stuff, they, they, that's what they do. Uh, Kate, I'm sorry. No, I don't know who asked this question. Uh, when adding a video to play everything, I switch scenes. The video starts over versus continue to play from a point. Yeah, so I don't think, uh, Ecamm team, can you verify for me, is that something that we've added uh, to Ecamm that, um, yes, sorry, okay, going back to this question, uh, you can do just by switching cameras in Ecamm Live. Thank you for that clarification. That's how I do it, but let's let's clarify that for sure. Let's go back to this question. Um, see, if you don't have a stream deck, then all you need to do is, is click in the camera switcher. You're staying on the scene. You're just choosing the, the right camera. So that is, um, thank you for clarifying that. Uh, I should have said that at the beginning. So whether you have a stream deck or not, um, there you go. Okay, so I was asking, I was asking Ecamm, can you, uh, we're gonna get clarification on this, can you, set it to come back to the video at a particular point. I have not seen that functionality. So maybe that's on the roadmap. The timer remained as the overlay without starting over because it was a camera changing, not the scene. Oh, the timer, sorry. I thought you were saying like a pre-recorded video. Um, the timer does start over when you come back to it, yes. Uh, as far as I know, there's no way around that. Um, Angelo, uh, will Ecamm allow me to connect to a PowerPoint presentation running on an external computer? If so, how would I do it via Cam link? Yeah, absolutely. That's how I do it. So anytime I'm bringing a presentation in, whether that's PowerPoint or or a keynote, um, then bringing that in from a separate computer is actually hugely beneficial um, to be able to uh, offload CPU usage, but also you can then bring it in via a camera overlay, meaning that you have a lot more functionality or control over where that presentation is in your different scenes. Um, and so you can do uh, you can do uh, a lot from that perspective. I was just looking at my team notes, sorry. And so if you bring it in via a capture card and a cable, so you're gonna bring in, it depends on what computer you have, so you need to identify the right cables, but a cam link or um, a any capture card, HD 60S Plus, like whatever capture card you have, uh, you can bring that in. Okay. Let's see. I'm not sure which one you're answering there. Okay. <laughs> looks like looks like they're answering questions in the chat too, which is fantastic. So, uh, yeah, you can bring in a yes, FH. Uh, you can bring in things via NDI as well. Uh, that is always an option. Uh, NDI, um, you know, because it doesn't have that hard hardwire connection. Uh, you have the uh, the chances of it failing um, 
more so than a hardwired connection like the cabling and the capture card. Um, but it is possible. Ben Benton, it seems that Facebook allows my uh people are saying my audio is low. Hold on, I'm just gonna adjust my audio. I think you know what I was messing with the roadcaster, so I might have um I might have caused problems with my audio. Okay. Um, it seems that Facebook allows my lives to be seen in more news feeds and notifications when I use their live button versus Ecamm. Any reason for that myth, Bitten? Uh, no, they're not. They People say this. Um, it is not true that you're like using a third party software is harming your ability to get views and be seen via the algorithm. Um, and so don't worry about that. What's happening instead is most likely you're hitting a different topic. Like, so uh, I think that people tend to hear that and then kind of make their own assumptions, but a lot goes into the algorithm. And so if you're it's the title, it's the description, description more so than title, by the way, on Facebook specifically, um, because of how it comes up in the newsfeed. Um, so description, uh, your whatever's going on visually, um, making the, the topic itself, the engagement. If you get people more engaged right up front, then they're going to, the algorithm is going to benefit you, right? So that's just something to uh, be aware of, but you're, you're not losing out by using Ecamm. Kathy, I want to schedule a Facebook Live. Can I send the invite from Facebook producer or Ecamm? So you can do either, and Ecamm will pick up on that. Um, when you're scheduling, you can also schedule from directly within Ecamm, uh, and then it's already there in the destinations drop-down box. I can't actually show you um, because I'm live, but you'll be able to. Um, you would be able to actually uh, get. Sorry, I, I'm sorry. Today I'm distracted. <laughs> I apologize, guys. <laughs> like looking at everything. I have like no sleep whatsoever. I am tired. <laughs> if you can't tell, I'm kind of lower energy today. Um, okay. So <laughs> I don't know what I was answering, but yeah, you can schedule in the, des the destinations. Um, and that will help you just use, you know, one thing, Ecamm, and then you're good to go. But if you decide to do it from live producer, Ecamm will also pick up on that as well. I know. <laughs> I never, I didn't, didn't I have, have a chance to get coffee this morning. Let's see. Next question. How do you make multiple comments fly in for intros and outros? Uh, please tell me the magic. Um, oh, okay. So what you're saying is, I think, what, sorry, hold on. Like this, where you have um, multiples. Like if you want, if you want multiple stuff going on here and I'm so screwing myself because I'm going to have to then fix it. But if you want like multiple comments coming in, uh, you can just drag, you saw me drag, um, and then you can drag them off. So I, hopefully that answers that question and let me reset my comment here. Sorry. <laughs> Let's see. Okay, uh, since this comment is up, I guess I might as well answer it. After updating to 3.8, I lost the numbering scheme uh, sh to switch scenes. How do I get it back? The numbering scheme to switch scene. So I think maybe what you're referring to is this. Um, so it used to say like, uh, hotkey one, hotkey two, right? Uh, now you have the ability to set your hotkeys. Uh, so you can choose whichever hotkey you want for any of the scenes. So I'm guessing that that's what you mean. Okay. Let's see. Next question. Uh, has there been a 
fix to allow my sound levels to be set by scene. Example, a song playing at a loud level during a countdown scene, but on the next scene to be set low as background music. Um, I'm going to let Kate uh, tell me uh, if, that's a, if that's a thing. But as far as I know, uh, when you are setting your sound effects or system audio, so like, so music, the two things that you're identifying is music, which is under the sound effects window, right? Um, versus the uh, the video, the video that you're playing would be under the movie. So, in what you're describing, it sounds like you shouldn't have any problem because you're just going to be uh, choosing that audio for those different things, and those are two separate things in your sound levels right here, right? So your movie versus your sound effects for the music. Uh, so hopefully that helps you. Um, let's see. Thank you so much, Mr. Poseidon. $10 super chat. My channel is growing every day. I'm amazed. I follow all of what LSP has to offer and now seeing some benefits through coming through. That is fantastic. Congratulations. I am so, so uh, excited for you and proud of you. You are the one who deserves the credit because you are taking action, you are doing the work, and you are sticking with it when it's hard, right? That's what matters. So congratulations. Okay. <laughs> Environmental, uh, can Ecamm show the restream chat? I missed that on the stream. I missed uh, where to make that work. Yeah. So I'm going to be doing a video about that. Um, so if you have, if you're simulcasting and you want a chat overlay through Ecamm, um, then what you can do is get, so in here, let me, I don't, I didn't have this planned. So let me set this up real quick um, to show you, but I'm going to do a full video about that. Well, hello, Harry Tornado. Welcome, welcome. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today uh, and coming on over. Okay, so if we go, okay, let me, this is, this is gonna, you're gonna, oh, what? Hold on, I'm using preview mode. Hold on. <laughs> I'm gonna change, set, get set up over here for uh, this demo of Restream. Um, no, I don't want that, just want this. And while I do, you can talk amongst yourselves. <laughs> All right. So here's what we're going to do. Uh, in Restream, you are going to um, go to this chat app on the side here, okay? Uh, so then you can grab this embed um, link. And then what you're going to do is you're going to uh, go to overlays and then you're going to do new widget overlay. And then you're going to call it whatever you're going to call it, right? And then hopefully nobody takes that. Okay. Oops. Sorry. Frame rate, 30 frames per second. Edit that. Um, but then you have the chat app here that you can uh, display messages. So if you, you, you want to like make this, um, yeah, 30 frames, right? Don't, don't steal my URL, guys. <laughs> but then you can, you can adjust it. You can make it the size that you want or put it wherever you want on screen and uh, have some fun with that. So if you do want to, I did a whole video yesterday about um, having that, hold on, let me get out of demo. I did a whole video yesterday on, you know, uh, the pros and cons of that. Um, but yeah, so that's how you do that. I'm gonna do a whole video on that because there's also a, there's also a whole like customization area of Restream that you would want to make sure you, it looks the way you want it to. Um, so hopefully that helps, okay. Kevin says, hi there, I use Ecamm Live and Pro Presenter for my church. I also use a Mac Mini 2020. Seems that they are running heavily and sometimes need times to switch scenes. Any suggestions? Um, don't do as much. If your computer can't handle it, which if, if you're having that kind of delay, uh, then you 
your computer is just not handling everything that you're asking it to do. Um, and so you want to pull back, right? So the way you decide or troubleshoot and figure out what your computer can actually handle is you, um, you start from the basics, right? You just have your camera and mic, and then you add something else, and then you add something else, and then you add something else. And you figure out while live, you can do this privately, but you do need to go live um, in order to troubleshoot, then your computer will tell you where it's crapping out. And so if you're adding ProPresenter and you're adding all of this other stuff, then that could tell you where you need to trim down in what you're asking your computer to do. <laughs> Yes, you're welcome. <laughs> I actually didn't cover that yesterday in the video. I always keep a few, a few caffeine shots in my tub. I think I need that. <laughs> where, where do I get some of that? <laughs> Go for technology. I use Keynote on my M1 running uh, Ecamm. How do I get Keynote full screen? I'm playing Keynote in a window. I still see my desktop on the edges of Keynote. So you're using Keynote on the same computer, it sounds to me. So option one, bring it in from a different computer like we were talking about before, uh, and then you have full control over that. Or if you're using it on the same, um, the, the, the same computer, um, there, there should be no reason why that's happening. You can look at, uh, you can actually look at, the, the window, I don't know how you're setting it up, but you know, you're using the PIP um, or are you just screen sharing? Um, like I have these PIP overlays, right? That allows me to uh, to be able to control and put the, the presentation in the box where I want it. Uh, so that might be an option for you. And then also you have the um, the window itself. You might, you might adjust, um, you can drag the corners of it and um, hopefully, like you can drag beyond the, the frame uh, now with 3.8. So that might be something to try dragging. Maybe it's just not dragging um, fully. Now, whoa, where did this, why is my super chat not? Holy cow, Christopher, thank you so much for the $50 super chat, dude. Dude, did you have a question along with that? Thank you so much. You are awesome. I appreciate you. Oh, here's a question. Uh, how do you create overlays and do moving ones like your lamb? Also lower thirds sliding um, in. Okay, so lower thirds sliding in. Uh, so let me go into demo mode here. Okay, I have to hide my super chat real quick. Okay. So when you're looking at sliding in, you can use this fly in from left, from right, or auto. Uh, that's what you would do there. And then the second question was, how do you create overlays and doing do moving ones like your lamb? So my lamb, what he's talking about there is, where's lamb? Hold on this. So this is actually a movie. You can see right here in the overlay section, this is a .mov file. So Paul has created this as a movie file. Um, and then I just bring that in like normal. So there's not, um, you know, you're not going to have, you know, lamb happen like that. You could have uh, you could have an, uh, a single, you know, overlay like that. Uh, that's not a movie file, uh, for sure, but hopefully that helps explain that. Okay. All the buttons. When I go into demo mode, it's like, I got to click all these things and then I'm screwing up my scenes by doing other things to teach you. <laughs> I'm like, please don't mess it up for next time <laughs> for more clarification. Sorry. Uh, Paul says it was created in After Effects and then you can export as movie or WebM and uh, specifically for LAMP. Okay. If I... Do, do, do. Uh, Anthony, what do you think about playing program window on a separate monitor? Any preferences? Yeah. Um, totally, 
totally up to you. So when you're looking at your demo mode, right? Or like, sorry, when you're looking at Ecamm and you see like these two things side by side, that's how I was trained on live production software way back in the day, um, you know, 2007 area. And that's just kind of how I see it. So I, it doesn't bother me to see multiple of me. Um, and if you prefer uh, to not see both of you uh, at the same time, then that's distracting to you, then totally whatever works for you. Move that off to a, a different monitor. It's totally fine. Uh, you set up your production the way you want it. And the beauty of Ecamm is that all of these windows are separate, right? So if I don't want my chat on screen, I can move that away. Um, uh, if I don't like the program window, I can move that off to another monitor. And you can maneuver Ecamm to be whatever it is that you want it to be. Uh, I have this set up the way I have it set up because this is the way I prefer to see it. And I am a little weird. I don't like to see the desktop screen at all. <laughs> and like, so even, you guys know this by me, uh, by, about me by now, right? Like even this little like thing right here is driving me insane. So I got to fix that. <laughs> okay. Uh, Anthony is the best or only way to set up video playback is to build them as scenes. Also, can you set in and out points for queuing video clips? We already talked about the in and out. Um, as far as I uh, know, there's, that is not um, the, the in and out doesn't exist. So I'm just going to let uh, Ecamm, um, correct me if I'm wrong, but Anthony, uh, the setup video playback is to build them as scenes. You can choose to do any style production that you want. You could just do that on the fly. Um, you could do, you know, if you're going to do it on the fly, you could load in your videos, right? And then you could be like, click on this video file and just go to the last video. Um, oh, because I'm on overlays. So I've got a camera overlay. So that's like, that's taking over. But let me go to, um, let me just create a fresh scene here. So if I'm on this camera, and I wanna just play a video file, then I can just do that on the fly. And come back here. So you can run all of that manually. I definitely prefer to set up scenes. That way everything is set up, ready to go. I don't have to click off the pip. I don't have to worry about what's, what needs to be clicked next. Uh, everything is done the way I want it to be done. Um, <laughs> Woohoo! Oh wait, hold on, I need to go back to my... Okay, hold on, let me push that comment again. So, you guys. Who knows uh, Marquez Brownlee, MKBHD, who are counting down apparently. 23 and a half hours tomorrow on the live streaming pros channel. Uh, MKBHD, Marquez Brownlee will be here and we're gonna geek out with him about his video setup. Um, you know, interviewing people like Elon Musk and um, how he, you know, does that on camera and still stays calm. <laughs> um, and we're going to talk about his setup when he goes on other people's live streams and things like that. So uh, get ready to geek out with MKBHD. I'm so excited. Uh, I can't wait to have that conversation. So that happens tomorrow at 10 a.m. Pacific on the live streaming pros channels. <laughs> That's a lot of dancing, right? <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> uh, thank you so much for the super chat. I have learned so much here at LSP. So grateful. Oops. Uh, it's taking me forever, but I'm doing it. I absolutely love Luria and Ecamm. Sandy, now I have to get started with Lita because I'm late. <laughs> Go get your Lita in. Thank you so much. I'm so happy for you and proud of you. Thank you, Anar, for the super sticker as well. Appreciate you. Uh, I don't see a question from you. Uh, Sonam, um, 
If you have a question, so uh, I don't see a question that has been brought in. If you have a question, be sure to put Q in front of your question. Otherwise, it doesn't meet it doesn't meet me over here on my Q that I'm looking at. All right. Um, I had I had accidentally I apologize, Sammy. <laughs> uh, in order to edit some of the things that I was showing you and demoing you, I had to turn my super chat off for a second. So I think I had forgotten to turn it on. I'm sorry, Sammy. I'm sorry. <laughs> Let's see, Christopher. Oh, wait, I answered that question. Gamer tagged media. Is there a way to only screen share part of a web page without the need for masking with overlays? Um, so when you're screen sharing, um, you know, you have let me go into demo mode. When you're screen sharing, let me go into my new scene here. Do this from scratch. Uh, you're going to screen share this, right? And then um, what you have as an option is this. So show current application, uh, primary display, secondary display. Uh, you can choose to, you know, to share any any of the individual windows from Ecamm. You can do Google Chrome. Uh, so you have the op those options. Um, in order to actually, I, this would be a good feature request, um, Ecamm, is to be able to like choose, you know how in Camtasia, you can actually choose the part of the screen that you wanna share. That would be a cool addition, actually, now that, now that we're talking about it. <laughs> uh, let's see, be more super, the podcast, oh. Sorry, what lighting are you using? I'm using two soft boxes and looking for the easiest option for limited space, like really small. Uh, so I am using something that's not really small. Uh, my main light is a, uh, is a dome light. And so it's kind of on the larger side. I, I don't know if we have that scene. Yeah, so you can kind of see, this is like a whole dome. Um, I, so you can use things like, hold on. Let me just pop on over here for you guys. So you can use uh, like, this is a side, can y'all hear me? This is a side panel, this is a newer panel light, or you can use something like a ring light, you know, that kind of thing. So, <laughs> could y'all hear me? <laughs> uh, but yeah, newer, uh, LED lights are very small, uh, or ring lights like the ones that we have listed. You can use the Elgato ring light, um, which is fantastic, or you can use, um, oh, also the, hold on. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't anticipate studio stuff. That is the um, Elgato Air, Key Light Air. Uh, so that's an option as well. Those are all small. But the problem is, and we have lighting. I'm just claiming it by now, Daniel. So sorry if we didn't, if we weren't already planning for this. We are now. Um, we have Lighting Week coming up where we're going to be tackling all lighting, all the things. Um, and oh. so. Thank you so much, Sonam, for the super chat. Appreciate you. Uh, if you ha you said you had a question, I don't see the question included, um, and I still don't see any question from you. But um, let me let us know, and I'll look out for it. But yeah, so uh, the thing that you need to understand with smaller lights is that you you know might need more of them uh, versus a larger light. So it depends on if you have limited space. Just understand that you know smaller lights produce a different type of light we're going to ex explain all of that in lighting week coming up soon uh what bench am i using to occupy all of the equipment oh my desk my desk is a custom made desk um i built i had it built for me for this space specifically and for my dis for what i wanted to, to accomplish Oh, there you are, Sonam, I see your question now. How to save my project in a separate folder because I wanna start with another project. 
So as of now, um, so when you say project, you know, uh, typically in um, the streaming space, you know, a project would mean you're kind of exiting out of this setup and have a completely different setup. Um, but what you do instead in Ecamm, uh, these are your projects. Your folders are projects. Um, and so set up a different folder with a complete, like I have the LSP production, but I also have the, as you can see, I have a ton of, I have a ton. Uh, you also have like GLN, which is today's go live now. Uh, so that's how you're thinking about projects. Hopefully that helps. Silver Plated Boy, thank you for the $10 super chat. Did you have a question? Uh, I appreciate all of the super chats. You guys are awesome. I, I guess, I'm guessing that means this is helpful. So that's cool. <laughs> um, French Press, does the Ecamm license allow you to use it on two computers, one for your stream, one for your regular stuff, so you can use virtual cam? Uh, you can use it on your computers, just don't share it with other team members, for instance, right? So uh, then then you're good to go on the license. But yeah, you can, you can have it on a, a couple of different computers for, for those purposes, just don't share that license. That's pretty like normal. Paul, uh, thinking of going double ring light. Uh, you did that in the last couple of weeks and it looked good. I mean, this looks good too. So I'm overthinking this. You can ignore this question. No, um, you know, I ever since I started using this light again, I something's been off. And I don't know if Chris, Chris was tweaking some stuff or messing with some stuff when he was here one day. And I don't know if he... I've been playing with the brightness because I think he brightened it up because we were trying to do something. So I, I need to uh, like figure out what's off with my lighting, but um, I got to just spend some time doing that. But the double ring light did look pretty good that day, didn't it? It did. <laughs> oh, um. I was just looking, I was trying to figure out what conversation was happening right there. <laughs> it's not, so it's, it's, I've been, I've been messing with the ISO. It's not the ISO. Um, it's the lighting for sure. Okay. Um, but yeah, like you, you know, lighting week, we'll tackle all of that. I, I don't really want the two ring lights. Those, that was like a, that was just a really like, rough setup because my light had uh, stopped working for, for a couple of days. <laughs> uh, yeah. Stop adding more to my plate, Paul. <laughs> All right. You guys, what other questions do you have? Um, anything else that I can help you with Ecamm Live? Uh, if you have not started watching the full video studio, you know, like you guys are asking some gear questions. I actually have a full video all about the gear in this setup and a whole playlist about the entirety of this studio setup. Uh, for those of you who are new around here, I am, uh, this is my living room. You know, this is my 850 square foot apartment. And so I had some really big challenges. And so I walked you through all of those challenges the final video in that playlist comes out on Monday at 10 a.m. Um, so pay attention for that. Look for that. Um, no, I don't. No, it wasn't the bulb. Uh, I finally figured out that it wasn't the bulb. It, it somehow, like literally without me touching it, went into lock mode and um, didn't. So basically the power wasn't working. So, but as soon as I unlocked it, I just had to get up my ladder because I can't see the screen. Uh, so I had to get, we had to get onto the ladder and actually like look at that. So, um, but that, that's what happened is, um, uh, yeah, uh, is that it was on lock mode somehow, some way. <laughs> I'm more excited for the cable management video. <laughs> but the, uh, the uh, Marquez Brownlee video tomorrow will be, uh, will be freaking amazing. 
<laughs> Let's see. Uh, Daniel, can you record in 4K using Ecamm Live? You can, but beware. <laughs> Okay, let me go into demo mode. Um, preferences. And then uh, I can't change it right now because uh, I'm streaming. But in the stream tab, you'll go to stream size and then choose 4K. Now, the thing that you have to be aware of is, you know, if you're, if you're, I tend to record in 4K and stream in 1080, uh, but you do just need to make sure that if you're streaming in, in, in 4K, that you understand um, uh, that not all platforms take that, but also you lose the ability to have ultra low latency in terms of chat uh, with your audience uh, at 4K. So that's something to be aware of. Um, I'm thinking something like save a whole project in separate folder on desktop somewhere. For example, I use uh, to work with Photoshop and I can save different folders with different projects. Right. I, I know that that's where you were going with that, but it's essentially the same thing. It's just not opening up a whole new instance of Ecamm Live. Um, so that just just be aware of how that works differently than what your brain is thinking um, and kind of work within that system and within full projects. Um, but maybe that's something that Ecamm Live is uh, thinking about. Um, I saw another question. Is Ecamm good for video game streaming? Absolutely. Yeah, for sure. I, uh, you know, there's nothing like, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you, you might be doing computer, you know, streaming, you might, or uh, gaming, you might be bringing in a different, like a PlayStation console gaming. Uh, but yeah, you can use Ecamm. I, I, they, we, they have a lot of uh, gamer users. Can I run Ecamm live on my 2015 MacBook Pro with i5 and 8 gigs of memory? I heard that there's a base level. You really only get the basics depending on your software too. Um, yeah. So, you know, that's going to be cutting it close, right? I mean, that's, we're going to have a, a Mac spec uh, coming up soon, but that's that you're going to have very limited functionality uh, if you're trying to do a 2015, right, with an i5 processor. So definitely something to consider upgrading. I mean, a 2015 to 2021, anyway, you should be considering upgrading <laughs> your computer. And now the beauty is, uh, you know, I have a, we're working on a Mac versus PC kind of, uh, video as well. And man, it's so interesting because now with the M ones, Mac streaming has become cheaper than PC streaming. Right. Uh, so if you're going to buy a new computer, then, you know, the M ones are freaking amazing, powerful, and, uh, you can, you can just get a Mac mini at this point, you know, they'll be releasing new ones, uh, this year, I'm sure. But yeah. Let's see. Okay. You guys, you are welcome for helping out for sure. Oh, wait, there are more questions. Will e using Ecamm live auto magically make you as attractive, charming and <laughs> yes, it will. Uh, if you use Ecamm Live, you will be automatically <laughs> just like Dog Rock. <laughs> funny, 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 funny. Um, okay. So do I have any sound, uh, m uh, monitoring while streaming? Depends on what I'm doing. So I always make sure that my audio sounds good. Uh, but if I'm, so if I'm, uh, doing an interview or if I'm planning on playing any videos or if I want uh, system audio or my keynote presentation has audio or anything of the sort, then yes, I am wearing headphones and monitoring through my Rodecaster Pro. That's how I monitor. But um, if I'm just doing a stream like this and I don't need audio in my ears at all, then I don't. So that's my personal preference, but you do you. <laughs> Yeah, the um, CalDigit TS3 is uh, the most loved 
uh, doc, powered doc uh, for you. Josh, do camera overlays have a frame option? When I put a camera overlay on a background, it would be nice to frame the overlay to look like an LSP overlay. Well, then just get the LSP overlays. <laughs> Um, but when you bring in a camera overlay, like it's just, it, there's, there's not framing around that. Um, but you can at the store, livestreamingpros.com slash store, then you can get something that looks like this. Uh, and then you put your overlay in this box and in this box, right? So you, you have that ability to build that out for sure. Can you monitor without hearing your own delay? Yeah, so um, I so through the Roadcaster Pro, I don't have any audio delay whatsoever. Um, I, you know, actually that's something that I would love to talk to the guys uh, about. Um, you know, in my experience, running audio monitoring directly through Ecamm has an ever so slightly delay, um, but I haven't actually talked to uh, the team about that. So I just realized I need to uh, see what's up with that. But I don't know if I'm I'm the only one. Uh, somebody's typing, so I'm gonna I'm gonna wait for their response on that. <laughs> um, okay. So your sound is amazing with no white background noise. What's your secret? Well, I'm using a, so I'm using a Rode NTG for plus. Um, but then I have all of the settings, um, set up on the Roadcaster pro. And so then, yeah, I mean, it's just, it's about, it's about making sure your mic is as close as to you as possible. Um, I'm not sure why you say, especially considering that you're using the Roadcaster pro, that's part of what helps you adjust, you know, the, the, the settings, uh, from that perspective. Okay. Oh, why are you having trouble with the stream deck? Um, have you watched my videos on it? I'm assuming Sandy that you have, but let me know. Oh, and also, you know, if you are having, um, if you are having, um, audio delays or anything, you can adjust your audio delay, uh, through Ecamm directly as well. Perfect. Um, is there any limit? Wait, hold on. Where did that question go? There we go. <laughs> this is, uh, is there any limit when using capture cards? Maybe three or four. The, the limit depends on your computer's ability to handle one, right? So like your computer, depending on which computer you have, may not be powerful enough to even handle two. So that's one part of the limit. Uh, and then I believe, um, I believe through the Cal digit doc had gotten up to four capture cards. Did he get past four capture cards? Anybody? Uh, let me know about that. I know doc has a whole video on that specifically, but yeah. Uh, you know, putting, so also the limit that you need to understand is if you have the same capture card, um, or multiple, like type, like multiple of the same capture cards, you, you do need to run that through the powered, uh, doc that we were just talking about the Cal digit, uh, or, or another one, but that's the recommended one. And you do not want to put like two Elgato, uh, cam links into your main computer, just directly plugged into that, to that, to that motherboard. So that's going to cause you problems. You're sweet. <laughs> I'm feeling like a big mess today because of lack of sleep. <laughs> um, I, that particular mixer, I don't have any experience with, um, but Behringer is a great brand. And so use what you got, guys. If you're, if you already have that, then Johnny, you know, use it. Um, mix, you know, as long as it's a USB mixer, right? Uh, Ecamm needs to see a USB connection any any software does uh so you know if you're using a a mixer to bring in xlr uh audio then that's going into your computer via x via usb so um that's that's what you need to think about when choosing a mixer um but if you have the preference of behringer then go for it i mean there's there shouldn't be anything wrong with it even though i don't know that particular brand <laughs> kevin thank you <laughs> 
Yes. Um, if somebody was asking a question about ATEM, I don't see that. Um, but yeah, I have a whole video about ATEM uh, Mini and when to choose what and how it all can integrate together. So thank you for saying that, gamer. I tried to do alerts through Streamlabs, but I didn't fire any alerts during the live. Do I have to be logged into Streamlabs while I'm live? No. Um, what I would suggest, first and foremost, like test this before, right? So you can in Streamlabs test and send a fire, like fire a test um, alert, and then bef like make sure that that is active. Um, make sure it's at the top of your overlays uh, section so that it's on that top layer. Um, but yeah, you, you're, something has probably just gone wrong with the setup. Maybe the link that you got isn't complete or something like that. But definitely do that test before you go live the next time. That way you know exactly uh, the, or that it's going to fire exactly as you, as you anticipate. How much upload speed do you have? I have 19 megs maybe. When the fiber optic comes, I ordered 200. Woo woo. Um, I have... I pay for a gig and I get nowhere near it, but I have bet between like, usually it's around 150 up. Um, but uh, I definitely pay for a lot more. <laughs> but 19 is great. 19 is great. You're doing good with 19. <laughs> All right, you guys, uh, remember, Marquez Brownlee tomorrow on the Live Streaming Pros channel, 10 a.m. Pacific. Um, and of course, Ecamm has a whole lineup of all kinds of awesome content for you on their channels as well. And if you haven't gotten your free tutorial or free training, you can get that right here. And uh, updates coming to that. The Ecamm, you know what? I have a bone to pick with Ecamm. They update things. <laughs> So much and so such awesome things that my tutorial videos sometimes go out of date too quickly. <laughs> but that's what's also awesome about them. So uh, I have some updates coming to the tutorial series very soon. <laughs> All right, you guys, put those dancing shoes on. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. Great questions. And I, oh, next week on this Ecamm show, on the Go Live Now show, we are going to talk about ISO audio. So if you're a podcaster, uh, if you have anything else like where you want to uh, repurpose content afterwards, the ability to actually record all of the audio tracks separately is, is here. So I'm going to show you how to use that and answer all your questions around it. So enjoy. Thank you guys so much. Let's go into dance mode. And I keep forgetting to make this a button on my stream deck for this particular profile. And so now I'm just wasting time and we'll see you next time. Bye.